Well, hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Lao with Kenchan Crafts and it's been a while so thank you everyone for sticking in there and allowing me to have my break. Um, I did decide to take a little bit of a break from YouTube and I think it's about two weeks now since I posted my last video uh, but today I wanted to share with you guys a product that was sent to me. This is the Lockby Field Journal. So. Uh, Emma from Lockby sent me an email about if I wanted to try out one of their products and you know no strings attached and I just said you know what if you're gonna send it to me for free I am more than willing to do a review of it once I took some time to get used to it before we get there I just wanted to let you know that this these are all my own opinions I am not paid or sponsored to make this review I just wanted to show my appreciation for them sending it to me to talk about it with you guys so Lockby was was founded by Chris Elfring and the name Lockby kind of translates to Lake Town and that name was chosen because Chris Elfring's hometown was Minneapolis, Minnesota which is so funny because I also live in well I live in the Twin Cities area which is Minneapolis and St. Paul and so I just thought that was so cool <laughs> that Chris is also his hometown is here in Minneapolis and so the name Lake Town because Minnesota is a state of 10,000 lakes there's tons of lakes here and Chris also named it that because of his attunement to nature and the wilderness doing your journaling and uh, stuff like that with nature a lot of the products that Lockby create are based off of Chris's experience in the military where it's really important to have something durable and reliable. A lot of the materials used in the military have no leather, which, you know, we in the stationary world, we love le our leather products and some of you who prefer vegan products, I think that this is going to be a very, very great item for you if you're not already using it. <laughs> um, but no leather is used because leather tends to be very heavy, especially out when you're going in the wilderness. And so instead they opted for waxed canvas, which is what this is made out of. It's a really cool material. If you haven't seen waxed canvas, it's, it's, it's a, uh, I mean, but if you've seen canvas itself, it's also very nice and soft, but got some interesting texture to it. Waxed canvas is light, it is durable, it is um, you know everything that is good for bringing with you on your travels outside of the home. Now I do a lot of my journaling at home. <laughs> I don't really journal too much outside but like when I want to go out in nature I think this would be the perfect thing to bring with me. This is an A5 size. It's about yeah, just about 1.5 times bigger than this uh, Traveler's Journal, which a lot of people love taking with them. But Traveler's Journal, like, I probably would not want my Traveler's Journal, leather journal, to get uh, in the mud or whatever. But something like this, like, I would not feel too sad or worried about it getting dirtied up and muddied up because it is supposed to be able to handle that. And I think this is pretty easy to clean too because wax canvas, like it, it does have its own charm in terms of how it ages over time and for your own personal use. But I think it's pretty easy to clean if you do get it dirty. All right, well that um, is a, hopefully not too long of a introduction to Lockby. I really like their values, you know, the ethical values that they have, and they also kind of work internationally with lots of uh, people, folks around the world um, to manufacture their products. So I think that, you know, it's, it's, it's a smaller company, I think. I, this is the, it's not the first time I've heard of Lockbee, but I haven't really thought about their products just because my own use of stationery and notebooks is a little different from what Lockby stands for, which is fine. It just means that um, it, you know, it, it, it would take a little bit more effort for 
people like us who like to journal at home to find Lockby and say, ooh, that is something I really want. Um, but yeah, so this is my first time trying it out and I will say that it is very interesting. I do like it a lot. I will share with you what I like and what I don't like because again, these are my opinions. I am not asked to say anything specific. So without further ado, let's switch it over so you guys can take a better look at this notebook. All right, so Lockby, this is Lockby's field journal, which is the cover with a journal in it. This does retail for $59 on their website. And if you just want their uh, notebooks, they do have them uh, four notebooks of their Tomoe River Paper uh, notebooks for about $34. And I think that's in USD. So $34 for four journals with 72 pages. If you've watched Karina's video already, she did talk about how that is a little bit on the expensive side. I know that I have purchased Tomoe River Paper inserts from uh, Goulet Pens for about seven dollars each so that's seven times four would be about 28. it's a little bit on the higher side yes but i think that when you compare these journals to the traveler inserts you're getting a little bit more paper anyways so yes it is <laughs> paper is expensive i try to get paper on sale <laughs> all right so let's take a look at what you get with a field journal. So the field journal comes in three different colors. I think one of them is black, then you have the navy with tan, and then you have a complete brown one. I chose this one because I really like this dark, you know, it's not that dark, but it's a lovely navy color with very nice light tan accent. It's, I think it's really, really beautiful. And then it comes with a strap on the side, which is so nice. Like if you don't want to hold it like this, you can hold on to it like this. And then their Lockby logo up here on this little tag here. And then you get this interesting clasp here, which is very, it's actually very easy to just put in and, and remove, but you kind of have to get used to it a little bit, okay? And this part is a really lovely soft metal. And then on the back, you have this strap here, which allows you to be, to be able to adjust how tightly you want your notebook to close, or you can like open it up a bit so that if your notebook does get a little uh, thicker, then you have a lot more space. So this, this band here allows for that flexibility, which is really nice. And then you also have a little bit of a pocket here, right? It's got Velcro right there, so you can put like your stickers inside of there. Uh, I wouldn't put any pens or stuff like that with this because it's m made to be sturdy and handle a lot of heavy wear. And so I would not advise like using, uh, putting any of your fountain pens <laughs> with this as you go out. like still bring protection for your pens because I would not put a pen in this loop. Uh, a found like an expensive fountain pen. If I were to take, say, like maybe a Caveco Sport or a Lamy Safari, um, maybe a Twisby even, I'll put those in here. Yeah, those pens, I'm okay with them taking a little bit of damage. It's okay, like if they were to be scuffed a little bit. But not these pens over here. <laughs> I would not take those out with me. All right, so now let's take a look inside. Once you open that, so you will find your Lockby notebook here. The Lockby uses Tomoe River paper, 68 GSM. So they use the heavier paper, which is a bit thicker. And the thicker version of the Tomoe River paper means that you will have less ghosting happening. Ghosting is where when you write with your fountain pens, you tend to see it peek through on the other side, like you can see here. Like you can see that, right? Most, like some uh, thicker paper, you will not see any of this happening. But because uh, Tomoe River paper is thin to begin with, 68 will still show a little bit of this bleed through, or not bleed through, um, ghosting, but it's a lot less than, say, 52 GSM. Now, I don't, I think these are also, the, the inserts I got from Goulet were also 
68. Yeah, so you can still see a bit of ghosting there. Yeah, you can see a little bit, but that's only with bright light. But if I, yeah, with no light showing through on the other side, I can see it popping, uh, ghosting through there, which is fine. That's that's typical for Tomoe River paper. Um, but there's no bleed through, um, no feathering. Those two are the more important things for me, at least. But if you are somebody that likes to write on both sides of the paper, 68 TSM is probably the better choice. Uh, and so I'm really grateful that they chose to go with 68 GSM because as you can see here, I just did one side blank to show the ghosting. And then I also um, wrote on both sides to show that it is possible without much issues. So I wrote a full page here and I did not see too much ghosting really. So this 68 JSM paper that they chose is really great and I, I like the simple cardboard, <laughs> cardstock design here in the front. Yeah, I think that's embossed. Really nice. Okay. So, like I said earlier, you get 72 pages, so I think it's like 36, yeah, 36 of these sheets, so it's 72 back, back to back. Um, if you use both sides, I think it's about 72. And then um, these notebook inserts, I believe this is an A5 size, yeah. The cover comes with these strap elastic bands here it's kind of like a traveler's notebook and this allows you to fit four of these Lockbeat journals in there so if you like a lovely thick journal which i probably will get three more of these just to put in here because i i do like my thick journals <laughs> um you know it's kind of like the this i love this style of like just having your journals in in a cover like this so the Lockby, uh, again, you can get four of these for $33 or $34 on their website. And um, I guess one final thing to say is that um, this paper also, I did not see any feathering, bleed, bleeding. Um, the ghosting is super minimal. Um, the only small feathering I found was my Falcon nib with Pilot Hiroshizuku ink, but this is the pen and ink combination. It's happened with the rest of my papers that I've used. So, but the rest of the pens that I have tried, they worked so well. And I even had a little bit of an ink blot there. <laughs> like it fell through. And you can see that the bleed through is minimal right there. Like, yes, you can see it, of course, but you can see this kind of situation on any paper. So, <clears throat> I really, really enjoy this uh, notebook. It is very nice. Now let's take a look at the features of this journal, of this cover. It comes with these three small, oh, actually, these are, these two are smaller. They're about the same depth. These pockets are the same depth and this one goes all the way down. So this third one is a lot deeper. And then this one up here comes with a Velcro and I believe it goes, yeah. So it stops right there. So you have a total of four pockets over here with this one being Velcro. So I believe you would put more stuff like glue tape in here, uh, erasers, stuff that will not just easily stay put inside pockets like this. And then on this side over here, you got a larger pocket for stuff like sticker packets, uh, ephemera that you might want to put in here. If you don't like to use the string method to put your journals in, you can also use this to just put the back cover in here and you can use your journal like that, which I think is also very functional, uh, especially if you have a much larger notebook. I think that a larger notebook will go perfectly in here. Uh, if you liked four different uh, journals, then you can use the elastic parts here. Um, oh, and there's another, another big pocket right here too. So yes, if, you, if you're gonna use this side for your notebook, 
and you can use this side to put in your ephemera and your sticker sheets and stuff whatever you uh is flat <laughs> that will go in there yeah so i really like the design here it's um it's very functional it's got lots of uh pockets but like not it it's not overdoing it and then the inside here is a very similar shade to the tan a little bit more olive uh, toned which is really nice and it's got these really intricate uh, like hexagonal pattern so like a honeycomb I think of <laughs> it's really super super cute uh, and then of course the outside is this lovely uh, waxed um, canvas the inside is a different material I believe this is uh, I'm not quite sure but I'm guessing it's like a polyester type of uh, fabric. Um, but everything here seems to be sewn in really, really nicely, really well. I think the craftsmanship here is so nice. And then it comes with two bookmarks <laughs> up here, which you can use to uh, bookmark your pages. Yeah. So overall, I really like the design of this uh, field journal. It uh, is very functional. Uh, I'm sure it's very durable. As like I said earlier, I have no problems with this getting dirty or getting beat up <laughs> when I go out. And, uh, if I go out and journal in the wilderness, you know, when you go camping and stuff like that. And then I also saw that you this little part here like why was this here but this is actually for the clasp here like it, it is a little tougher to put this in here but you can do that so that this thing doesn't dangle when you are um, using it open like this so like if you were to hold your notebook you don't want this part to dangle and stuff like that so you can use that right there to hold it so they really put a lot of work into all the functions of this because, I mean, which makes a lot of sense. The ideals behind their company is functionality, sustainability, and sturdiness of their products. All right, now to the things I don't like about this. So when I wrote with the first page here, because I tend to write at home, I like a flat surface. And so, when you, the, like maybe the first couple of pages, you're gonna have this issue, and I certainly did. But basically, if you wanna write in this cover, you're gonna find that there's a lot of grooves and bumps because of this fabric. And the fact that it, you know, it's there for a practical use. But when you are writing on the left side of the notebooks, you're going to find yourself coming through all these bumps, which fountain pens do not like. <laughs> fountain pens like a very flat surface. So, okay. While it is not a deal breaker, it is just a little bit annoying because um, that's just something I'm not used to writing with a bit of a texture on the back. And then I, I think like, again, a lot of the things I don't like about this, and, and there's not much that I don't like anyways, <laughs> I love it a lot. Um, but you can see that this canvas cover is a little bit, like it's not completely straight. So it is a thick cover. There's like, it's not, I wouldn't say cardboard underneath, but like it feels like thick cardboard that is a little bit bent. So if you don't like your stuff to be um, a little bit um, like misshapen, it's not misshapen per se. It's just not like perfect all around. And I think that that is part of the charm of such an equipment like this. So it doubles up as a stationary and a tool. And I think that because of that situation, you're gonna to have to sacrifice a bit of this beauty that we're very used to in stationary. So, but 
other than that, I really, really enjoy this. Okay. Well, I think that is all I have to say about my thoughts on the Lockby Field Journal. I love so much that it is something so, so handsome and beautiful looking, but yet just holding in my hands, I'm not afraid for it to uh, take a hit or two. And that really eases my mind to not think of all my items as being fragile because we have to use our items and sometimes they do get, you know, tossed around. I mean, like this, not, not, not my pens. <laughs> um, but like, sometimes we just need things that we can toss into our purse or into our bag. This is one of them. And it's nice to be able to just have stuff like that where you're not always conscious about, oh my gosh, I need to keep this, my traveler's journal really safe, or I need to keep my uh, other stationery notebooks super neat. This is something that I don't have to worry so much about. And I like that. Um, and at the end of the day, even if it took a few hits, it still looks great. And even if it looks a little bit dirty, I think that adds to a bit of this, the charm of this too, because it's meant for the wilderness or meant for when you travel, um, if you want something else besides a traveler's <laughs> journal uh, notebook. Obviously, I love my traveler's notebook builds. It is leather. And then the Lockby journals are not leather. They are waxed canvas. They do not use any form of leather. So if you like sustainability, leather-free, completely vegan stuff, this is a lovely product to use. So, all right. I want to thank you guys for joining me in just talking about my thoughts about Lockbee's products. And let me know down in the comments if you have your own Lockbee journal or what your thoughts are on Lockbee. Again, they are fairly new to me, even though I've heard of their names before. And yes, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you so much to Emma and uh, Chris at Lockbee for sending this out to me. I thank you. Thank you so much. And again, I hope that my video here has been helpful to share a little bit more about Lockbee with you guys. Uh, if you have any more questions, I do. I will put uh, their website down in my description box and just have you know write any of your questions down in the comment section and I'll do my best to help answer them so if you've gotten this far thank you so much and you know just remember to leave a like down below it really helps my channel and subscribe if you are not subscribed yet and I will see you in the next video bye